Mercedes is looking towards bringing a bunch of upgrades to the W14, but for the first time, we've heard about an upgrade that is going behind the scenes in Bricksworth and Brackley. While the end product is the most important one, and in this case, that's the W14, everything that is mounted on the car needs to go through an array of inspection and development in Bricksworth and Brackley, and that's something that Wolf has spoken about. Still, the team didn't see too much progress with Elliot as a team principal, and that's why they opted out for someone who was more familiar to them, James Allison. Join us as we go through the reshuffle of staff at Mercedes and whether or not this is something that will help the team in the long term. After a troublesome start to the 2023 season, one thing became evident for Mercedes. The design needs to change and it needs to change fast if they want to be competitive soon. Unlike in 2022, the team accepted from race one that this is not something they can work with, which is why we're going to see a brand new car being brought to Imola, and it will be further developed on tracks like Montreal, Silverstone and Barcelona. But before I go into the news that's been happening back in Mercedes garage, let's talk a bit about the 2023 and 2022 versions of Mercedes car and what kind of challenge they presented for Mercedes so that you'll be able to understand how the development path in the factories affects the car's performance on track. In 2022, Mercedes built a car that had too strong a rear end, which resulted in it porpoising and bottoming out. In an attempt to battle this phenomenon and tackle it down, Mercedes built a car that had too strong a front end, resulting in the car being too pointy and aggressive in the corners and missing out on rear downforce, as said by Hamilton. This is all very important because Wolf came with the statement that Mercedes knows where they went wrong and after building two very opposite cars, they're now going to work towards the ultimate goal. Build a car that's going to meet these two opposites in the middle and challenge Red Bull and Aston Martin with it. Not to take anything away from Ferrari, but from where they're located right now, I don't see them posing a real threat to Mercedes in the 2023 season. Nonetheless, one thing became obvious. Ever since Elliot was appointed as the technical director of the team, inheriting this role from the old new owner James Allison, the team has gone downhill. Keep in mind that James Allison was responsible for building one of the most powerful cars that has ever hit the F1 sport, the W11. Allison kept the position until 2021, and when he left, the 2022 regulations were left more or less up to Elliot to be understood and interpreted interpreted, and it's safe to say he didn't do it as effectively as Mercedes would have wanted him to. It's not like Allison would have had a different impact on the entire situation as well, given the fact that he also had his imprints on how the 2022 car would have looked. But one thing is for sure, he would have had the experience to see where the car was acting wrong much earlier than Elliot, and therefore react with time. Many experts have suggested that with Allison and Vowles leaving the team, it was more or less the downfall of the Silver Arrows. So excuse me for pointing it out, but Allison's return to the team was definitely the best thing that could have happened to them in times like this. I do have a lot of respect for Elliot. Don't shoot me for stating the obvious. I'm just stating the facts. The team managed to build two very opposite cars, both of them far from the expectations that Russell and Hamilton had, and they didn't implement driver's feedback when it mattered the most. Hamilton's statement about the no-pod side-pod design. And the fact that Mercedes brought back Allison to the technical director role, stating that his role with the team wouldn't be as active as they'd think, only goes to show one thing. They know his worth, and they know that they need it desperately right now. Elliot himself agreed that after searching for the best and optimal performance and setup on the car, it would have been better if Allison and him changed roles, with Elliot's skills not being best suited to his position as a technical director. Wolf spoke about this matter as well, saying, This was very much driven by Mike Elliot owning the process, so we have reversed the roles. Mike has moved up to CTO as he has a brilliant switched on scientific mind and James Allison has returned to his technical director position reporting into Mike. On the other hand, it's also understood that Allison will retain a level of involvement in the America's Cup project that he was working on during his time as CTO. But nonetheless, him being the CTO of the team means one thing and one thing only. Mercedes is out there for blood.
The team understood that the backbone of the team being gone for two years has been detrimental to what is going on with the W13 and the W14. And on top of that, Valves has left the team to be the team principal in Williams. Allison's return to Mercedes was very warmly welcomed by Wolf, who explained that Elliot himself believed that Allison was far better suited to the technical director role, where there is more hands-on responsibility for the car. Furthermore, Elliot is now ready to focus on wider organisational technical developments that play to his own strengths, and all of this means that we'll see a competitive Mercedes further down the road in 2023. It was expected that Allison would have a bit more of a proactive role once he came back to the team, but I had no idea that the team would promote him this fast to his old role. It's not that I don't approve of it, quite the contrary. This is the best thing that could have happened to Mercedes, as Elliot himself accepted that the role was too challenging for him. But it has definitely come as a shock to every F1 fan out there. So what comes next for Mercedes? Imola is definitely the track that is marked on every F1 fan's calendar out there and there are a couple of things that Alison would have to deal with sooner rather than later, with the first one being the design of the W14. This is something non-negotiable and if the design doesn't turn out the way it's supposed to, then Mercedes can throw the 2023 season into the garbage and focus on the upcoming one. But with Alison's imprints all over the upgrades right now, it's hard for me to imagine how things could go wrong for Mercedes right now. Wolf has shared some direct updates about where the car is located and what is going on behind the curtains in Bricksworth and Brackley, as the Austrian went on to add. In terms of car development, it's encouraging to see that within three races, we understand the car much better. We have to find a clear direction where we need to go, and I believe we're on the right trajectory. We need to consolidate our understanding and hopefully over the next few races we can make another step. There will be setbacks but there will also be upgrades and plenty of work that will help us get closer to the front. The machine is continuing to run in Bricksworth and Brackley at a fast pace. What you see on track is only the tip of the iceberg but the performance of the car and power unit is made in these two factories. One thing is for sure, Mercedes knows and finally understands what went wrong with the car and Allison is definitely the guy who can bring the car to where it's supposed to be. Every F1 fan is hoping that the newly designed W14 will have nearly the same characteristics as the W11 and although it's only something we can dream of in a season with such a strict budget cap and development paths, Mercedes has done something to ease up the job for Allison yet again. The jobs of the senior designers have been changed as Mercedes tries to better adapt the team to the cost cap environment, with John Owen staying as the chief designer of the team and Giacomo Tortora now the engineering director of the Silver Arrows. All of this is supposed to blend into one, a successful team and one that can finally bring back the glory days to the team, which is now desperately needed given the fact that they've been schooled by their customer team since the beginning of the 2023 season. So what do you think about the changes that Mercedes has made to its internal structure? Do you think it's enough for them to win races and be competitive yet again in 2023? Let us know in the comments below.